I'm Richard Miller with Goldie May, and this is the live genealogy research series. Watch as James Tanner and I, along with invited guests, work through a genealogy problem with no script and no agenda. Maybe you'll learn from the big strategy, maybe you'll learn from the small features and the tools, or maybe you'll just see a better way to do it and you can leave a comment so we can all learn. I hope you find this really helpful. Now here is the research. Okay, welcome to episode 13. This is part two of Research Like a Pro with Nicole Elder Dyer, and she's going to just keep going with the steps of Research Like a Pro on the case we worked on before. So, Nicole, over to you. Hey, Richard. Hey. I'm excited to finish up our little case study here. It was kind of hard to leave in the middle of it. So. Yeah, that's right. We were in the, we were kind of in the zone, right? But <laughs> yeah, I'm going to we'll share my screen. Today. Yeah, it's going to be good see what else we can find here. Well, let's pick up with our research planning in identified sources. So last time we made a hypothesis and now we're going to make a list. It says use locality guide to identify available sources to search. And our locality guide was kind of brief. We didn't really look into that, so we can look into it right now. So usually what I try to do is think about the sources I've already kind of had the idea to search. And we had been talking about doing some census research just reviewing what we knew, we already have the 1860 census. And mm. at that time, Clement was 50 years old and he had some people that looked like a, a wife and possibly children, but the relationships weren't given. And then we had his death in 1872 and his birth in 1808. And that was based on his cemetery memorial grave thing. It didn't okay. have a headstone image, but his wife's headstone did say that she was the wife of C. Darnold. So we have some original, you know, an original source here giving this information. So let's see, what censuses should we search? Okay. So we did 1860, you said. So do we want to do 1870? I would do that. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I would just go back in time. Just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I would probably just keep going back in time. So when did his wife die? She died in 1888. So I would probably even check the 1880 for his wife. Yeah. And just see what's going on. Because if there's a probate record, it might continue being worked on through her life. And then after she died, sometimes that's when they would continue doing the division, mm, depending okay. on the laws of the state. So it might be good to just follow her forward in time. And then going back in time, we'd go to 1850. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, when would Clement have been in his own household, probably? So you said he was born in 1808. And so if he, say, 20 years later, 1828, uh, he would have been out, probably. So yeah, maybe, maybe he, was out. Yeah. he was out. Yeah. It's possible. You know, he, possible. his marriage date from that Find a Grave Memorial is supposedly 1832. So yeah. he could have been living but, at home with parents prior to that, or he could have moved out on his own. So we can definitely check all the way back check. to the 1830 for him as a head of household. Okay. So the 1840, 1830, maybe head of household, maybe mm -hmm. child and parents. Home. Cool. Okay, so there's some census records. And then as far as, you know, if we find a candidate for the father, we and we already do have a candidate, I guess. So we have Fanny Noland and her husband. So we already have this William Darnold or Darnold as our candidate for the father. So we could add this to our timeline or we could just, you know, Sometimes I will put information from people's trees into the timeline, but this time I'm not going to bother with it. I'm just going to use this in my research planning. So William Darnold could be the father, supposedly he and Franny, Franny, <laughs> Francis <laughs> Fanny Nolan were the parents and William Darnold, we could look for him in the prior census years before Clement was an adult. So 1820 for William Darnold and 1810, they're the same, mm -hmm. and 1800 possibly. That makes me question, what did we put for the first census for Kentucky? So 1810 was the first federal census for Kentucky. And then I know in Virginia, where we're hypothesizing the parents moved from, they did have the 1800. So I'm guessing we could just do Virginia here and then I don't know where the Darnolds were in 1810, maybe Virginia or Kentucky. Okay. And I don't know, did 1790 include Virginia too? Yep. So okay. we can do Virginia 1790. Uh, the original. 
the so that's the backbone we're we're gonna do all those yeah well if we're just making a brainstorm right now we'll have to do a prioritize list later but mm. the next thing i was thinking was probate records and i already kind of did a cursory search for this and didn't see it in the ancestry databases for william darnold okay. but it would be better to just check in the family search catalog and see so let's do that right now so okay i just want to see what there is and is this typical for you you'll just do kind of a check whether it's there you won't get into it but just to know what your what your options are before you prioritize yeah just in making a research plan Mm -hmm. let's see so we're probably looking in let's see where did they live in 18 let's see oh wait we don't know where the father was going to be in 18 so we're we would want william darnold's probate and i don't know that we have his we don't, death we didn't quite put that on did we yeah see, 1858 monroe county monroe kentucky county. okay okay so let's just i guess we can check that so probate for William Darnold, 1858 in Monroe. So in Ancestry, there's that really great database of probates for US, probate and wills, I think. There it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I'm going to just grab this URL and add it to the research plan to check that because I know I had checked it really quick, but I can't remember okay. what I found. And that's why I decided I needed to do this research project. And then in Monroe County, let's check and see Monroe and see what they have digitized here. So probate records, and I look for the author where it's the county, so Monroe County. They have order books and they have probate records from 1881. So that's kind of late. Mm. And then wills from 1861. All right, well, that's our problem. Here's some wills from 1856, but if he died in 1858, he's not gonna be in this one or in that one. Okay. And this one is a book and it's probably not gonna be we have to original. go to the family history oh, library to find yeah. it. And yeah, you're right. It would okay. be a derivative, but even that would be helpful if he was in it. Um, yeah. But the fact that it's only a few years before the other one makes me think that there just aren't very good options there. Okay. So that's probably why this For, is a, a thing that we have to research. Okay. <laughs> For what it's worth, I looked on the map and Monroe County is like Southern border of Kentucky versus our Gallatin and Carroll are the Northern border. Uh-huh. Maybe it's wrong. That was another right county. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. yeah. What we'll have to do is just wait on that until we do some more research. But okay. what I do want to check is tax records. Because often when you see two men on the Kentucky, you know, in Kentucky, when I've done this before, if I can see them on the same tax district, that helps a lot. Hmm. So let's check for Gallatin and Carol. So I like to put specific links in my research plan. So that's why I'm kind of getting these. Nice. So taxation, I look for the county as the author. We have tax books and tax lists. Oh, this is the one we want, the earlier one going to 75 because we're probably going to want to do it before around 1858, which is supposedly when the father died. If does I sign in- books, Oh, sorry. Does tax books versus tax lists mean anything to you? Or was it just because the year was earlier? I think they just named it different things. Sometimes okay. you'll see tax lists that are just pages that are not put into a book, but usually they are bound mm. into a book. Okay. Oh. All right. So here for Gallatin County, which is, let's see, that's where supposedly they were married. And then later Carroll County was created from it. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking if we look in those early years, like 1833, 1835, those years, that might be good. Mm -hmm. So okay, I think cool. I'll add that. Uh, actually, I'm going to take this full URL up here so that we can have it all okay. and put it there. And then for Carol. So we had thought of some other things. Oh, the marriage record. Yeah. So here's that authored. So we had labeled it as an authored source that gave us the marriage information. So I was thinking we could go find the original in Gallatin County. So going back. So vital records vital. and then marriages versus deaths. Yeah. So a little late there on that one. Yeah. This is an article from a journal. Hmm. That's going to be a derivative. Let's see. Gallatin County, Kentucky marriages, marriage records. That Here we go. Good. That That's the one, one. Yeah. from the county. Great. So we have indexes and these are even indexed. So we could probably just do a database search. So if maybe we click this link, it will give us the database. Kentucky County marriages. Yeah, we should start right. with that probably. And sometimes if I can't find that it's in that database, then I like to save this link to browse for it because we have an exact oh, date. Smart. So yeah. 
we could just go browsing right to it. And sometimes you, the image isn't even linked to the database and you have to go find it anyway. Okay, so we've got tax, probate, census, marriage. I think that's good enough to start. And then okay. we can see what we come up with and go back later. And the next thing is to just pick the five best sources most likely to answer the research question. Obviously, if there's a probate or a will, it would answer our question. But I don't feel like we can jump there yet because we don't know where William Darnold lived for sure. We just had that clue. So I'd like to continue taking Clement back in time methodically and just see where he went. So I think what we should do is... Then after that, I think we should find the marriage. So I'm just kind of doing this chronologically. That will just make a, you know, we can make sure we know where he was in 1832, if he was in Gallatin or somewhere else. Then I would do 1830 census for William Darnold and both, and Clement tax probate. And we'll kind okay. of go from there. How's that sound? So tell me about, yeah, tell me how you prioritize that. I want to trace you, you... Clement back in time and get more data about where he lived because I don't want to do random searching in all of Kentucky for. Mm -hmm the father's probate until we really know more about, is this the actual father? Do we see them even like living in the same area around 1830? If we do, then we can also trace them forward in time with these tax records and then see if William left the area. If he did at a certain date, then we can go searching for him later and trace him forward in time. So I guess I would add here like census records for William Darnold. Okay. And this one is for Clement. Cool. Yeah, that sounds great. Great. Okay. Well, now we can just get started. Search time, with that. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's going to be two places that I save the findings. This section is where I can like write about it, transcribe things. And then in Airtable, I will go over to the research log. Typically with clients, I keep the timeline separated from the research log so I can remember what I had at the beginning and then show them, look, this is where we started. And then here's the research log of what we found uh, okay. for my own research. I do it the same just because that's how I'm used to it, but anybody could do whatever they want to do. You could just keep adding things to this timeline and that would be great too. Cause sometimes cool. it's a pain to have some of the facts here and some of the facts there, but I'm just going to do it this way. Great. Cool. All right. So 1880 census. All right, so one thing that I usually do when I'm looking for these censuses is I check the hints in my ancestry tree first. Sometimes they're already sitting there. So let's go to the hints. And we've got a will for Clement. So that wasn't really on our research plan. I mean, most people's wills don't name their own parents, but we could look at that later. 1840 census, that looks promising. Yeah. 1850 census also looks promising. And here's the marriage record. See Darnold with his daughter, Lucinda Darnold. Mm -hmm. So that's probably not relevant to our objective, but that's good that we're finding some things in the hint. So, well, let's go I can ahead. see how the plan helps you stay away from <laughs> distractions in your hints, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I probably would just go ahead and start with this 1850 census since it's here and uh, it's in our first planned item. So we have Clement Darnold, a white male, age 42, same birth year as the 1860 mm -hmm. calculation. And he's living in Carroll County, Kentucky. So going back to our timeline, same place that he was 10 years later. Still have Drusilla, a bunch of inferred children. Looks like maybe possibly twins here, Daniel and Ruth. I guess they were gone because I don't see Daniel yeah, and Ruth in 1860. Yeah. The oldest person is a 20-year-old, Francis. So she would have been down here. Oh, there she yeah, is. So okay. everyone above Francis wasn't there anymore. Mm. Francis, Andrew, Lucinda. That, that's great. So we got some more inferred hey, cool. children. Uh, we know where they were living. Let's look at the original image and look just for neighbors just in case there's Darnold's living nearby. There's Campbell's, Montfort, more Campbell's, mm. Wright, Sandifer, Burroughs. Let's do our source citation for this. So going to our research log, the first thing we're doing is the 1850 census. That links to the people table. And I like to usually keep a list of people here, but I'm just going to hide that for now because I'm not really using that. So the 1850 census for Clement and today's date is when we did the search. This is just the typical things you would keep in a research log ancestors, the website, the URL. I actually like to do the URL from this one. Oh, that takes page, me to the this. page. Yeah. Yeah. And the locality is Carroll, Kentucky. 
the date of the record is 1850 and now we can do our 1850 census citation. Now, what is the locality within district two? And then now we need the dwelling. Oh yeah, it's indexed 120 and 125. Oh let's nice, check. okay. Let's make sure it's right. And then let's see how his name is spelled. And the URL that I use for the citation is before the question mark. Oh, okay. It's shorter. Yeah. And the microfilm publication is M432195. So that's done. Just usually copy and paste this household info to have there for reference. It always looks funny. Sometimes I do this to just have it be easier. Ah, uh, right. When I'm writing a research report, I usually will transcribe the information by looking at the census image. And so if I were doing that, then I would just, you know, go through and make a table in a Word document that said Clement, uh, 42, male, born in, oh, farmer. And then does that birth information? That's funny. They just left okay. birth blank. I've seen that a few times. I don't know why. And then look, they put the 900 a line above. Do you think Francis, who's oh, three, two months right. old, has $900 yeah, no. worth of real estate owned? Hey, that's so, a great catch, yeah. That's probably for Clement. So I would put that, you know, I would just type, you know, include that. Clement's birthplace was unlisted. Probably owned $900 property. Okay, and then um, Richard was helping on the farm as a laborer mm -hmm. and they were farmers. And then let's go one page back and one page forward looking for relatives. We've got the side bottom family, Easton, Ball, Wilson, Campbell, Jackson. So far I don't recognize any of those names. Uh, Campbell, Wyatt, Neves, Burnett, Dumari, Sevt, Stevens, Williams, and Garriott. So I could, you know, Put those into my fan club right here but i think i'll just do the next door neighbors in the interest of time okay so my trick of looking at the index martfort is how they said that i thought it was montfort i'm gonna go with montfort that's hard to tell <laughs> William montfort. yeah okay and down below him was george why Campbell? Great. Good. Comments and All next right. steps. Um, Drusilla looks like the wife and a lot of children, probable children. Mm -hmm. and, and, okay, so we can check that off our list. So we've done 1850. Sometimes I like this little strike there thing. There we go. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then the other census that was there already was the 1840 census. So let's look at that one. Okay. So I'm going to close down these tabs that we're not using right now because we already saved the links. So we don't need them. So this one says Clement Darnell, not Darnold. Okay. And Henry County. Oh, good catch. We're in a different county. Yeah, yeah. and so Henry is, see. I'm looking at the map and it's right by Carol and Gallatin at the top. To, there it uh, is, yep. Henry. I wonder if I could zoom in. Oh yeah, it's a little funky, but so Carol, Gallatin and Henry are super close. Super and then close. Monroe is down here where supposedly the yeah. father died. Mm -hmm. Great. So they're all kind yeah, of right so that's there. Good. Yeah. All right, so we found this 1840 census for Clement. Oh, look, we have Thomas Tharp. This is interesting because I already did a proof argument of Thomas Tharp to his parents. Oh, that's and a relative or just a friend? Or it's just like a, um, a cousin, like a okay. second cousin or something. Going to my tree, hmm. I can show you again because I think it's interesting that they're living so close to each other. So yeah. here's Humphrey. Arnold and Harriet Smith. And okay. so Clement is supposedly a great grandchild. The Thomas Tharp guy, if I remember right, they are actually are not related then. They're just part of the same group that migrated from Fauquier County oh, okay. because this is the mother's side and 
Thomas Tharp came from Louis Tharp's parents' side, which is a different side of the family. But they did intermarry quite a bit. All right, let's go back to this. So Thomas Tharp, there he is. And Clement Darnold. Let's see some other names. Just looking for any Darnolds. <laughs> yeah. But he might have, the father might have already moved away. Adams, Blackwell. What about that? Blackwell? Yeah, that looks a lot Daniel like Daniel or Darnell? Or, yeah. And he's right above Clement. How did they index have, it? Oh, yeah, they the gave name? it the oh, same. Yeah. Have you heard the name Blackwell before? Nope. I don't know who that is, but okay. this is great. I love these 1840 census records because you just sometimes see names and you're like, well, who is that? Yeah. <laughs> He's got to be related. So, okay, let's log this and then we can keep track of some of these names we're seeing in our fan club. Does this give us a specific place? It doesn't on here. It's, yeah. It says not stated, so it probably just was, they just did the whole county at once, probably because oh, okay. it was newer, smaller. They didn't need to divide it, maybe. Now I need to know what line he's on. So one, oh. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Forgot the page. So let's see, that says number four right there. I don't see any, there's a 12 there. I would call this page 272. Uh, so the okay. whole spread is yep. given page 272, it looks like. Now the results are, Clement had quite a big household again. If, yeah, so let's see, he had two females under five, two males, five through nine, one, I just copy this whole thing and put it in there, like okay. usual. Were there any older adults there besides, let's see, free white female, 30 through 39. Oh, and look, they, they do have some enslaved people. Oh, and this is weird. Look, where's, yes. oh, Clement There's is no, here. There okay. He, just free white it. male, 30 through 39. And then his inferred wife would be here. Got yeah, it. Young, oh, this young is, kid, or yeah, I guess one male. Ten, four, perfect. Three, four, young kids. Got the children. I didn't see any adult, older people there. Sometimes you'll see that. I did not either. Yeah. And Blackwell Darnell is his immediate line above him. Blackwell is also a name that I have heard before as a surname with this group of people from Bakir. Oh, so it could be that he's a descendant of one of those. There's like an Arnold Blackwell marriage, one of Humphrey's daughters. I wonder mm -hmm. if that's where he got his name. Now that you, you had asked me, do I recognize that? Now I recognize it as a surname. Well, the thing that I notice here is that neighbor appears to be Blackwell Darnell. Also, Thomas Tharp is nearby. So I'll put him as well. Yeah. As a fan. So when I add those people, they go to this table for later. So analysis cool. and I can group them and sort yeah. them and stuff. So we don't need to do it yet, but maybe I will come back to that later. And here. if you had typed Thomas uh, Tharp here, it would have, if you already had him, it would start auto filling it, right? Yeah, let's try that. Let's just pretend. I think I had someone in their name, Piles. So then oh, it would yeah. give me the choice cool. and I could choose him. And then I could link that. This row would then be linked to that person. And then there would be two of these little boxes. What do we have, we have a couple, next? Oh, right. so, so a couple done. census records. Oh yeah, 1840 is done. Now we've got 1870 and 1880 to do. Going back to Drusilla. I wonder if she's Checking in the her hits hands just in for case. Yeah. Smart. Oh, a picture. Cool. Her last name maybe was Henry. That's cool. Okay, so here she is in 1880. Drusilla Darnold. Oh, she's Gruder. living with yeah, the Magruder. son. Yeah. And look, a niece named Sophia Tharp. Oh. Hmm. So cool. they were related the, to the Tharps. They must have intermarried yeah. later down the line again. Because I know these families married each other, not just once. Interesting. Okay, great. So let's log this. Cool. Okay. Now we just need the page. Got to go to the image, I guess. Sometimes there's multiple page numbers, though. Page four. Great. I know sometimes you do page four, 
stamped and then page 10 like handwritten, oh, handwritten. Or yeah but i just try to look and see which page number would be the most helpful for finding the source again and if it's on the page already i like that one so page four page and then four. the dwelling in the family numbers uh, are 28. 28 yep results are i'm just gonna get the household so we've got magruder and his wife two sons lyman and david drusilla who's the mother of magruder don't you love these relationships when they're here so great and then the niece sophia tharp the comments are drusilla was the mother of magruder and thank you Taking that one step further, we can probably infer that she's the mother of the other children that were in the previous census records, right? Yeah. But we can't say that, I guess we can't say for sure. That's beside the point. Niece from the Tharp family. And she was still living at that point. And the timeline we have says that she died in 1888. So we know that she was still living in the place in Carroll County where we would assume like there would be uh, probate and stuff. So did we not get 1870 yet? I didn't see that one, I don't think. Hmm. Is it over here, 18 No, Because we have to search for it ourselves. Fine. Yeah, interesting, <laughs> we haven't had to until now, right? I mean, we've had- It's gonna be yeah. indexed weird maybe. Okay, about 1808 in Virginia. Okay, let's see if we can find it. Mary C. Oh, there it is. Hey, Darnell. No yeah. With no D. And Drusilla. Hey. Anderville. Cool. They had some cool names. Anderville. <laughs> Magander. Magruder. That's Magruder. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, that was easy. Hey. So put them in our research log. It's nice when people are where you expect them to live and oh, not yeah. migrating all around too much. I like those keyboard shortcuts so much. On my last keyboard, the control C and control V buttons were completely rubbed off. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I'm gonna put Virginia too, even though. Oh yeah. Because that's gonna help us. I just wonder when the family migrated because if he was born in 1808, 1810, we might find them together in the 1810 census back in Virginia still. All right, friends and neighbors. What do we see? Right, we're not doing a huge fan club study right now, just kind of getting some names just in case they're relevant later. So what are we finding? They, they were in Carroll consistently in Carroll. So we're going to probably start, we, we need to add 18, or sorry, we need to add Henry County to our list of places to check for Darnold's. And mm. so we can adjust our plan. Let's do that. Henry and Carroll counties, possibly Gallatin. So we've got some different places to check. And then the same with the 1830 census, although we'll probably just do a general search, general Kentucky search. Now we've done all of our census for that first step. So let's do this marriage. Clement Darnold, father of the groom. So he was the father. C. Darnold, marriage, 1841. That's a bride, a father of the okay. groom. Hmm. Don't see any Drusillas here. So we could try putting it spelled differently like that. Same results, I think. Yeah, okay. Skinny Drusillas. Let's try Drusilla. What was the name that she had? Henry? And the family trees? Yeah, I think you did say Henry. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Hey, there you go. McDonald. Nice. McDonald. Okay, well, let's see why they thought it said McDonald. I'm so curious. Now. There's that marriage date, 23rd of July. Oh, yeah, it totally says McDonald. Oh, it totally does. Wow. That's really funny. 
Clement McDonald and Richard Q. Henry are held and firmly bound to the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the Justin full sum of 50 pounds. Blah, blah, blah. Sealed and dated this 23rd day of July, 1832. The condition above obligation is such that whereas the marriage contract is shortly intended to be solemnized between the above bound Clement McDonald and Drusilla Henry of Gallatin. Uh, and then the people who signed, look how Clement signed his name. Darnold. Darnold. Hello. Even though someone, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> the person writing this, whoever it was, was it this guy? Didn't hear it correctly or something. Or He was like, Darnold's not a name, but McDonald, I've heard of that. So I'm going to yeah. go ahead and just write McDonald. Okay. Hey, that's interesting. Okay. Well, I'm glad we found it by putting in Drusilla's name. It would have been harder to go searching by the date. Yeah, McDonald, right? Yeah, that's true. So now we'll add the marriage. Another thing that I sometimes do is just update the timeline. But as if I'm doing this for a client, I'm going to keep it over here so that I can keep separate that I knew before the marriage date, but now I have the original record. All right, so this was created by Gallatin County, Kentucky, and it looks like a uh, loose marriage, let's see, loose marriage bonds. Let's see, where did it go? Doesn't look like it's in a book. Yeah, these okay, are just, just loose. loose. Oh, there might okay. be a certificate. Let's see if there is. Oh yeah, well, this is a oh, license. Cool, okay. So we've got the license, and they also put McDonald on that. Henry, daughter. Oh, look. Drusilla oh, Henry, uh, daughter of Richard Henry. He having personally consented there, too. Don't you love that when you can find wow. a, a consent from a parent for a marriage so that you have the proof of the parent? Yay. And it's, yeah, and does that mean that she was beneath the age of? Yes. Usually, okay. usually the age of 21. Okay, this is the next paper after. What is this one? Is this for the same marriage? This is to hereby certify my consent to a marriage between the my daughter Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Gillian. So this is the next Gillian. marriage. Different. Yeah. Okay. This is so cool because look, it actually has the signature of the mother of that is cool of Sarah of Elizabeth Sarah Gillian. Anyway, that's not related to our project, but hey, we also got the signature of Clement, so that's fun. And so yeah. which one do I want to cite? Probably, I think either would be either. sufficient. Both of them were created before the marriage took place, right? Yeah, this I is think they were the 23rd and marriage was 24th. Yeah, what does this say? Yeah, these are both on the 23rd. And what did we have in our I timeline? I think 24. 23 to oh, no, 23. 23. Maybe. So it doesn't matter. We'll just so maybe put it doesn't in. matter. Okay whatever okay so gallatin county kentucky created this marriage bonds and licenses i would call that Now we could add one more layer like citing whatever family searches images came from. So they say it came from multiple county clerks, county courts, and historical societies of Kentucky. But I'm guessing it came from the court records. So I would just say, well, we already put that as a creator, so I probably wouldn't add it. The okay. creator is the county court, so it's good to go. Okay, cool. And the results are... What I would do for that is, since there isn't a transcription to copy, I would probably just type out an abstract. And then the friends and associates and neighbors from this are Richard Q. Henry, who we know is the father. Whoops, wrong thing. So comments and next step. So in 1832, marriage in Gallatin. So that could be that the Henry family may have lived there or the Darnold family. But the fact that they didn't know his name was Darnold makes me think that he was the one coming from out of county. Oh, that's a good point. Is this the only record we have in Gallatin so far? The marriage? That might be right. I think that was the one Gallatin record on the timeline as well. But it was really close. It's really close. It again. Yeah. So it is right 
there. We can cross off the marriage. Got that done. Now we got, oh, 1830 census. This is where it gets exciting because we might find William Darnold near Clement Darnold. I don't know. I don't know where either we're going to be living. Oh, right. Was he out of the house yet or not? Wait yeah. to find out. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do Clement first. And it wasn't in the hints. So we're just going to go. I guess I can make a new tab here. We just had the 1840 in the hints. So we'll do 1830 census. I like ancestry. I usually just use their census search. Okay. Clement. Donald and lived in Kentucky. I like his name because it's not too common. Yeah. Manoa, Manoa C. Donald in Bedford, Virginia. That is not even close mm -hmm. at all. Let's put exact in Kentucky and then let's try just Darnold. Blackwell yeah. Darnold. Hey. Hey, cool. He was in Henry, Kentucky. How old was he? We got a male under five, a male 20 through 29, and a female 20. So he looks like probably a brother, like an older brother, maybe. Francis You're saying based on the age of. Yes, because we, yeah. if, if Clement got married in 1832, and this is 1830, and Blackwell's living on his own, and he's about that same age, young adult, 20 through 29. Yeah. Okay. He's, well, let's look yeah. at that. I think that's worth looking at because. That's like our only clue. Did you see anyone else on that list that looked good going back? I didn't look down. Okay, so William, William, three, what, four Williams. Yeah, and they're all in different counties that we haven't really uh -huh. talked about yet. So I think our yeah, best Yeah, but Henry bet, County. Yeah, you want to stay there? Do Blackwell. Oh, well, and there's also Francis. Hmm. Hmm. Who's that? Well, let's start with Blackwell. We know he's a person who's somehow connected to our clement so i think this is a good place to go next cool being a little flexible on our yeah research plan here so let's grab this and add it to the log and the results are that Blackwell Darnold and Francis Darnold lived next to each other. So we can add Francis Darnold here as a friend and associate. And then I'm also going to paste in the household information for Blackwell as far as the dates of everything, okay. the ages. I can't remember. Did you say you knew the name Francis from before? No. Or is that new? Okay. New. I think it's another brother, but let's see how old he was. Francis. Oh, I spelled it wrong. I think I did E. He's also 20 through 29, probably. Yeah. But there is a female 60 to 69. Oh, interesting. Which makes me think. So it can, it can be the older brother? This could be Francis Fanny Noland living in one of her son's households. Mm -hmm. And if her husband, well, but maybe not because from what we have, William Darnell died in 1858. So it could be Francis Darnold's wife's mother. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it doesn't make sense. We don't really know what's going on, do we? But we have, I guess we should log that guy too. Francis Darnold. Probably was the male 20 to 29. Also in the household was an inferred wife and children and an older woman, age 60 to 69, I think. Mm. So we don't know who that was yet. My guess is that William Darnell, Darnold, whoever this supposed father guy was, maybe wasn't indexed with the last name spelled like that. So let's search for ELL. -L. Great. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six possible guys. Okay. We need to look at counties. So we've got uh, Montgomery, Simpson, Simpson Lewis. Lewis, Logan, Callaway, Montgomery. I guess I, we could look at the map, but what I would probably do at this point is go back to our plan, which is 
to do taxes next okay and see if clement darnold is in the tax records in the 1830s and 40s and not just notice any people nearby we're going to go back to the catalog and so let's see we want to do it right after he was married so 1832 he got married in gallatin but by 1840 he was in henry county let's okay. get our locality info because look at let's see gallatin county was created in 1798 carroll county was created from gallatin in 1838 but what i don't know about is henry so i guess i want to go just check on henry county so in 1799 henry county and gallatin were created and it's just right you know, at the beginning of all these counties. So yeah, I think we should look in, in Henry County. It looks like that's okay. where some Darnolds were living. We had Blackwell Darnold in 1840 there. And then in 1840, Clement was there too. Tax records and Henry will be a good place to go next. So we're going to go to a place we didn't even research plan for, Henry. Yeah. But we've got to be flexible with our plan and taxation perfect 1800 yeah right at the start now we'll go to this one i think we'll have okay what we're probably looking for is like right around the time when he got married and after that or we could start at the time when he, we know he lived there in 1840 so we could just do that okay, and so either way back. We'll a good spot there okay yep yeah i can't wait what are we gonna find here we go yeah <laughs> I love it when yeah, the years like are huge years. like that. Oh, that's the best. Let's see. What do you think? Do you want to go to 1840 or do you want to go to 1832? Should we try our luck and go to 1830? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Here's 1830. Henry, 1830. Okay. Great. Now let's see if we can figure out how they've organized this. I think the what whole these? entire county has been alphabetized there's the c's so they've gone yeah which isn't my favorite i wish they were all just in their districts as they originally were because then you could see the fan club but that's okay oh, oh blackwell darney how about oh, here we go yeah yeah blackwell and clement clement and francis nice but where's the father right so we're 1832 we're guessing these are this is 1830 and we're i mean we've assumed that these are brothers yeah but this yeah, is i guess just, they're not entirely alphabetical right it's like all the d's but could the dad be down lower somewhere still yeah good point we should keep looking or maybe these brothers kind of came to henry county and their dad was going other yeah, places true true okay what is this column here land must be a number of acres of land county Watercourse they live near. Okay. I think. This is very good. Hey, we could go back a year and see if there's a father somewhere. Yeah. And we don't actually know. I mean, just based on the ages in the census, though, it seems like these are brothers. Okay, let's add that to our log. So the, what's interesting to me is that on the 1830 census, we didn't see Clement, but he is taxed as an adult. But I'm guessing maybe he lived in one of his brother's oh. houses. Okay, so we've got Francis and Blackwell. So the three Darnolds that were probably brothers. Actually, this is my comment. I'm going to move it over here. Did it work? Okay. So the actual oh, okay. yeah. info I would take is Clement Darnold. He didn't have any land here. So that's probably why he wasn't. That's why I wasn't in the census. Yeah. I'm guessing he was just in the household of Francis. Okay. Because he had 63 acres in Henry County uh, okay. near the Henry watercourse. I think that's what this column is. Okay. So let's just put that Clement did not have land. He was probably just taxed the poll tax. Let's see what this one is. White, white's 21. 21. Okay, so that's good. We know okay. he was above 21. No land above white. 
months, 21. So I'm guessing he was over age 21. So what is 1830 minus 21? Is that 1809? So he was just barely over 21 if his 1808 okay, birthday is correct. Yeah, yeah. So Great. I guess we could go back a year in the tax records and we might not see him there. Yeah, now you can't wait to go back. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's see when he started appearing. They're not here. Oh, there they are. Did you find them? Blackwell Clement is there. So that's interesting. And what? Did we miss Francis because we were going too fast? Well, I guess we're seeing a little household again, aren't we? So is it Henry on top? Henry at the top of that list and then Blackwell Clement. That's not, oh, it's Fanny? I mean, it's like. Oh, a, hey, I was totally ignoring that per, first line. I don't know why. I was just focusing on Clement and Blackwell. Yeah. But yeah. Who is that? That's a really good question. So it's, is that a G or a? Fanny. Danny? Oh, is that the mom? Fanny Francis Fanny? Noland? Yeah. Hello. Why didn't I think of this sooner? Hey. I just okay. assumed it was a man. But now that I see that it's Fanny, she must have been widowed already. And we thought that her husband died way later, like in 1858. I mean, way but later, yeah. Apparently, yeah. he was already deceased because the only way a woman would be on here is if she was a widow and she owned land. Oh, okay. So, hey, this is very hey, good. I would say this find. is exactly what we needed to find because this shows evidence of clement darnell in proximity to fanny darnell who was supposedly the wife of william darnell and fanny really the relationship i care about for my proof argument is fanny noland to her son clement darnell so here we go this we got it nice <laughs> good find good thing you pointed out that top line because i was just kind of like <laughs> what <laughs> it does look like henry but i think it, it is fanny. Like henry. yeah i think like yeah. a cursive F with the uh -huh. thing here and then an A N N Y E Y. Or no, that's just another N N N Y. Yeah. And it's that same land, that 64 acres. And hey, we did not remember to put on our research plan land records, but that was something oh. we had talked about last time we recorded. Mm -hmm. So let's add that to the end of this list here. I would put this probably before other things hmm. because we know there's land. And what would you want to find in those land records? That... Sometimes you'll have land records where people are witnessing each other's deeds, or you'll have a okay. land record of Fanny. Like we could look for probate for Fanny. We could look for a deed of Fanny giving that um, land to our children. Um, even the heirs of Fanny could have the land divided and that could be recorded in a deed rather than probate, okay. just depending on how they took care of it. Cool. So, We've got to figure out what happened with that land. So let's log this 1829 tax list. And I'm so glad you said we should go back to 1830 and start there because we could have been slogging hey, we... through tax records for hours. Hey, well, yeah, that's a <laughs> lucky break. That's good. <laughs> Whoa, page 17 again? How funny. Wasn't that the last that's one? A... Oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, then I'm just going to go ahead and copy. The neighborhood didn't change much. Fanny Darn Neal's line one, owning 64 acres of land and Henry on Mill Creek. Hey, Mill Creek. Look at that. That's big. Mill Creek was in Mill Henry Creek. County. And then Carol must have been created from parts of Gallatin and Henry. Oh, okay. Let's check. Yeah. Carol was created from Gallatin and Henry and Trimble. So they didn't move. They just lived in a place. They just that, stayed in Mill Creek and it moved around them. Yeah. This is great. We're just learning so much about yeah, the Darnold okay. family. This is going to be a great proof argument because look at, we've found so many good things along the way. We've got all the locality information. Fanny was probably the mother. So she was that older woman in the household. Oh, right. Good point. Yeah. She was the head of household. She's the head of household. Fanny, Francis, because we, I was uh -huh. thinking that was the male, but hello. It's funny how when I'm thinking of her name, Fanny Noland. I failed to realize as a married woman, her name is Fanny Darnold. So oh. it's like a mindset switch that I have to like do in my head. Like she is Fanny Darnold now. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Clement was 21 in 1829. 
So that's cool. If we go back one more year, it does, I wonder the map works out really well. Yeah. If we kept on going back when, if we would find that Fanny wasn't listed and then her husband was listed, you know? Oh, good. Yeah. Good thought. We'd catch his death date. But I think what we should do next, just for the sake of time, and since we found that one good one, is to go over to land records. And since we're okay. in the county, we I think we need to look in for probate and land in Henry County. Okay. But we do have this index. We were going to do a search here. So we could try. Or maybe we should just try taking off the first name and leaving... Yeah, you could do darn Darnell? star or something. Ooh, good idea. I was gonna yeah. put it in Darnell, but I like the star idea. Yeah, what I would like to do in that instance is just go to the county and we know there's land. So you know I should have done a negative search for that. Let's do that because I will want to be able to say that I did that search. Now, so let's just see where we are on the plan. So we did this probate broad search. So you can cross that off. And we did this 1830 census and the tax records we did for Henry. Now let's do this land. I think that'll be our biggest okay. clue for Fanny Darnold and the land and Clement. And let's just see what, what's there for Henry County. Would you ever come back to a probate search and browse records if, yes. since we didn't find anything? That'd be I later would. though. Okay. Yeah, I would do that. I want to kind of find out. We could, so another thing we could do is go back in time and see, like maybe we should just go to image 17 on here real fast. Yeah. <laughs> see. 16. Hey, William. That's awesome. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey. Good thing we checked. Yeah. I wonder if at this point they're all in the same is this possibly Mill Henry. for Mill Creek? And it's that 64 acres again. Oh, good catch. Awesome. So he died Henry in County. 1820, between 1828 and 1829. Eight? Yeah. Isn't that where we're at? So we're in mm -hmm. 1828 and by 1829, we have Fanny. Wow, yeah. great. So now we know his exact time of death. That's awesome. Wow. Let's see if we see any other Darnolds. I don't, so Clement was probably not 21 if he was born in 1808 in 18 he would have only been 20 this year and then blackwell i don't see blackwell do you i don't see any other darnells there let's check the just the image before i make sure i didn't miss it and then was there before this image did we were there any other oh, wait there he this is image? there he is found him? darnell oh, nice, blackwell nice. and he has no land and he's probably just taxed for a white pole there he is and then what's oh, two yeah. probably had two stud horses or something horses i think nice so he was just starting out it looks like all right so we've got darnell blackwell i think it was spelled like this it's interesting how every year it's spelled a little it's different. a little different yeah so for william he's 16 so the other one was uh 15 Yeah, sometimes I'm tempted to just skip these extra brothers and things, but, you know, it's part of reasonably exhaustive research, I feel like, to, you know, show that we looked for other family members and this is, everything's lining kind up how we story. would expect. Yeah. Okay, so now cool. we've got William Darnell tax for 60, I think it was like 64 and a half acres. And it looked like maybe it was on Mill Watercourse, which we're guessing is Mill Creek. Mm -hmm. And the comments are that William died between 1828 and 1829 when Fanny was taxed as his widow with the same land. It helps that it's kind of a this weird is... amount of land. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's close some of these extra things. And our final thing to do is the land. So we just need to see if there's any extra evidence in the land records that's gonna help us with our proof argument for Clement to Fanny. But that one tax record in 1829 is pretty good. Now we got the deed index 
volume one is all the way up till 1888. So I think that's the one we want. That's the one. Okay. D starts here. And we've got the party's name. So we've got the year, the grantor to the grantee, the deed book number, the page, the acres mm -hmm. on the water course. And then we've got the backwards. So the person who received the land. Uh, so I guess what I would hope to see is uh, the deed of maybe like William or Fanny to one of their children, that 64 acres, just seeing where did that, did Clement live on up. that land in Mill Creek that they had, and if we can connect that he lived on the land that Fanny and William owned, then that's a really a good solid parent-child connection link there. Um, hmm, interesting, William Durrell, could that be a Darnell? Could that be, could be a Darnell? I, at least to me, it's looking like it. Does this say it does? So this is like eighteen hundred. Yeah. I think what we should do is go forward to the time when we think, a late. let's go to like the eighteen thirties, and see if there is any kind of deed from Fanny to Clement, because that would be like the perfect when he's a young, thing. Yeah, young man <laughs> leaving home or something. Yeah, or you know yeah. she, or, or like a division of the land that the heirs were doing and they were selling it, uh, or I don't know. Okay. Or maybe like Blackwell selling it to Clement because he inherited it, or they all inherited it, or he's the executor or something. Oh, Darnell. Darnell. D. B. Porter. What is P? that? F. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking a P or a D. Let's e put it in the log. So what I usually will do is I put book ten, page four. 22, right? Let's go check. When was the time, when did we last see Fanny? Was she in 1842 or was she just in, let's see, we have her in our fan club. We can find her there. Francis. So she was, oh, she was in 1840 next to, to Blackwell. So she was still living in 1840. Uh... Okay. In so maybe county. we could go past 1840. Well, should we look for her in 1850? Now I'm wondering how long did she live? Oh, good point. Yeah. We'll see. Let's just check. Okay. Okay. So she might have died before 1850. So we okay. could technically do like a, a negative. 1850 negative search. But in the interest of time, let's keep going with our deeds in the 1840s i think would be a good time to look okay yeah but normally i would just probably start and when i like towards the beginning and just go all the way through and get everything but we're trying to go a little faster okay i don't see any oh you know, wait did you yep powell c oh, yeah c that's clement i think clement Mill Creek, MC. Oh, yeah. That's 50 acres on Mill Creek. 50 acres. From, but he got it from someone named yes, Powell. T.S. Powell. Book 15, page 494. Okay. And this is in 1833. All right. Well, this is great. We found some possible deeds to check. You know, I actually want to go through this whole index, find all the Darnells and put them into the log like I'm showing. And then next time we get together, why don't we choose which deeds we want to look at more closely based on which ones I pull out of the index. And we can go forward with the last part of researching like a pro, which is um, kind of putting everything together in a report. And I think we have pretty good evidence that Clement was the son of Fanny, seeing them together on that tax record, but it would really help to have just one more record of maybe a deed or something to help us cement that. So we'll see what we can find next time. Cool. Okay, Nicole, this is awesome. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Richard.